Hello friends, welcome to Tech Quest channel. This is for the tech by your tech. Today we will see some of the important points in pre-analytical phase in quality control. The patient's status, the diet can affect the sample result. Metabolic products of food can increase in venous blood, glucose, lipid and catecholamine may show variation due to post-absorptive hormonal effect. The difference can be observed in blood chemistry values after exercise. Example, a proteinuria, LDH, isoenzymes and elevation in creatinine kinase, CKMB and testosterone. Medication. If the patient is taking any medication that is affecting the plasma volume can affect protein concentrations, CBC, blood urea nitrogen, iron and calcium concentration. Body position while collecting the sample. Changing from sitting to supine position cause shifting of water electrolytes into tissue causing hemoconcentration which affects the total protein, albumin, lipids and cell to increase. Collection. Patient identification. Inaccurate, incorrect, missing wristband, test tube, label, unreadable barcodes. Incorrect identification can lead to wrong patient results, delay in the patient results and patient redraw. Tonicate and draw technique. Hemoconcentration can occur when the tonicate is left for more than a minute. Hemoconcentration can increase proteins, potassium and PCV. Traumatic draw as a result of vessel wall injury can cause elevation in creatinine kinase, myoglobin and potassium. Blood collection from peripheral catheters may cause hemolysis as a result of patient blood flow between the vein and the blood collection tube. Use of partial draw tubes will decrease turbulence and specimen hemolysis. Hemolysis rates are high in emergency, labor, and delivery departments. Hemolysis can interfere with result in calorimetric assays. Order of draw. Improper order of blood collection tube draw can result in incorrect test results. The order should be blood culture tube, then coagulation tubes. Serum tubes with or without activators or without or with gel, then heparin tube, then EDTA tube. If using wing set, a discard tube must be drawn before coagulation test. The discard tube should be a coagulation or non-additive tube. The blood culture sample must be taken first to prevent contamination from other tubes. Each lab validate its own order of draw. Draw volume. Inadequate sample will alter the blood to additive ratio. Inappropriate tube storage and using the tubes after expiry can alter the tube vacuum level. Underfilled blood collection tubes can affect RBC morphology, lipids in EDTA tube, aminoglycoside value affection serum. Overfilling inappropriate transfer of blood in syringe collection above the recommended value can cause inadequate anticoagulant, fibrin formation, microclots, platelet clumping and increased instrument maintenance. Mixing. After sample collection, the mixing is very important. Incorrect number of specimen inversions. In insufficient mixing of sample to anticoagulant causes microclots in collection tube affecting HCT, hemoglobin and clotting lines and causing fibrin formation leading to instrument probe and fluid path obstruction and in instrument downtime. Excessive inversions or agitation. Gentle inversions of the tube 180 degree upside down and then back right side up. Vigorous inversions may cause foaming and hemolysis. LDH and potassium are the most effective indicators of hemolysis. Other tests affected by hemolysis are AST, ALT, hemoglobin level, IN and T4. Inappropriate blood collection tube for specific analytes. Processing and centrifugation, insufficient clotting time. Sample should be clotted before centrifugation. Clotting takes 30 to 60 minutes at room temperature. Clot activators allow short clotting time. Thromine containing collection tubes can usually clot the specimen in 5 minutes. Inadequate clotting time can cause fibrin formation that can clog the instrument probe. Prolonged contact time with cell before separation. 
Serum or plasma should be separated within 2 hours from the time of draw. Prolonged cell contact time causing decrease in glucose and increase in carbon dioxide levels. Centrifugation conditions. Excessive centrifugation force that is more than 3000 G may cause cell lysis and slight increase in LDH and potassium. Inadequate force that is less than 1000 G or less than 10 minutes may cause incomplete barrier formation in gel tube or cell contamination of specimen. Sample transport. Excessive transport time to analysis can result in hemolysis and elevated LDH and potassium values. Exposure to light can affect bilirubin, vitamin A and B12, beta carotene and porphyrins. Vibration from some pneumatic tube transport system can activate platelets affecting prothrombin time and activated partial thromboplastin time. Excessive wave vibration can cause hemolysis and elevate LDH and potassium levels. Sample exposed to elevated temperature can affect cryoglobulin and higher temperature with denatured proteins and affect gel integrity. Chilling specimen is required for catecholamine, ammonia, lactic acid, pyruvate, gastrin and parathyroid hormone. Transport of sample. Sample collection tubes should be stored and transported in a vertical position to promote complete clot formation and reduce stopper contamination specimen agitation and potential hemolysis. For proper additive performance, invert the sample tube 5 to 10 times allow specimen to clot at room temperature. Some blood collection tube manufacturers collaborate with diagnostic manufacturers to ensure compatibility between blood collection tubes and assay reagent validation of the pre-analytical phase. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos.